the mic is on. Um, so I want to talk about real life dimension. I'm going to do it very, very quickly. Listen carefully. We're going to talk about, obviously, cybersecurity. So Einstein said, he coined the phrase, I guess most of you know this, that I don't know with what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV would be fought with sticks and stones. We were educated to think that this is the biggest risks that we're going to face, that this is the future, that this might be the future. Uh, but if there was something that the past few years have taught us, and this is a very interesting thing, and people have talked about this thing on this stage, is that cyber attacks are no longer limited to the cyberspace. And this is a very interesting concept. And we saw that with the Chrysler Jeep, right? You heard about that. And we saw that in Germany with this uh, 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 steel mill plant. And obviously, we saw that with the stocks that hackers did something on computers, and this something created a real damage in the real world. And you know what? We know for a fact that we're going to see more and more and more of those. And the thing is that what we're doing with the Internet of Things, what we're doing is that we're creating more targets and more attack scenarios. We know that. Every new technology creates new problems. So we are actually connecting to the Internet more things that hackers can hack. Um, and the connection, it's not clear today where is the virtual world ends and the physical world begin, right? Those two worlds are becoming so well connected. Uh, and we need to think about this risk. We need to think about those families of risk. So I tried to think about what kind of families of things we will see in this new attack scenarios when we're talking about real life damage that's being created by cyber attacks. I try to map those traditional categories in the cyberspace to those real-life threats. So we have uh, uh, availability, the other side of the coin of availability is denial of service, right? What kind of attacks, what kinds of attacks we will see with denial of service in the real-life world? So obviously, people immediately think about uh, traffic lights and trains and cars and everything like that. But you know what? There is maybe something more interesting. We might see something that I try, to get, I try to name assets hijacking, in which hackers will hijack real life assets. So you're sitting in the car, you're watching TV, and with, you didn't do anything, and suddenly the radio turned on automatically. And then you hear this mechanical voice saying something like, Hello, dear sir. It is a nice day today, and we hope you are enjoying your ride. Please notice that we have taken full control over your car. Don't worry. We mean you no harm. You are kindly requested to wire transfer 12 bitcoins to our account in the next 10 minutes. Otherwise, we will sadly have to kill you. Have a nice day. And thank you for your cooperation. Now, you're in your car. The car is driving very fast. You might not even have a steering wheel. What do you do? And you know what? This is a new type of ransomware. But right now, instead of hijacking our files, they will hijack us or maybe our car. And if you think that this is a science fiction scenario, remember that technically speaking, this can happen today. And obviously, we're talking about hijacking medical assets, and we're talking about hijacking a whole uh, production plant where a hacker can take control of this production plan, and they will, then they will tell you, either you will pay us $2 million, or you will not be able to use your uh, industry, your plan. The second family of things is uh, obviously confidentiality. We're moving to a world where be, be, instead of having everything always off, we're going to the world where everything is always on. Think about that. Right now, if we want to take a picture, we have to take our phone out, turn on the camera, and take a picture. We are moving to a world where everything will always collect data. And if we want to stop this collection of data, we will have to do something. That obviously will create more privacy mining. Privacy mining, where big companies take a lot of privacy, they put them inside a machine, and on the other hand, you get uh, money. We don't have the time to go over those scenarios, but we will see amazing privacy mining scenarios. Um, more and more sensors will collect more data about us. When we are home, when we don't feel well, what we're doing, and all of this data is going to be used in order to violate our privacy more and more. But the biggest problem is integrity of systems. 
Integrity of systems is probably the biggest problem that we're going to face in the years to come. Stuxnet is a great example of integrity of systems. The people who was there in the enrichment facility thought that those machines were correctly and they didn't understand that something has happened. And they didn't understand that they, what the, the computers told them that's happening is not what really happened there. And with integrity of systems, we will see amazing attack scenarios, right? Planes that uh, arrive at a different location, I don't know. Uh, um, trains that collapse, I don't know. Water plants that are being, uh, um, that our water is being poisoned. Maybe a, a, a threat scenario where uh, pills will not work correctly. In that case, it's uh, pregnancy pills. This is my personal nightmare. If they will stop working correctly, I don't know what's going on. And integrity of systems is going to be the next big challenge. And you know what? People who develop assets today, people who develop the, the world of IoT, they don't have security in mind. Most of the times when we see devices being introduced to the market, though the, those devices have no security solutions integrated in there. We have to make sure that people are doing security by design. If you are not doing security by design, it's going to cost much more money later, it's going to uh, be much less effective, and it's going to take much more time. So basically, this is what I want to Say, I wanted to say that we're going there and we have, we have the responsibility as the cybersecurity industry to make sure that those new products, those new machines, sometimes it's going to be huge machines, are going to be secure by design. This is what I, well, this is what I wanted to say.